Welcome to Lunch and Learn, presented by Coda Bears. My name is Bill Golis. I will be today's presenter. And the topic for today's Lunch and Learn is BAQ zones, creating and using them. A BAQ zone is a tool similar to a Google type search where you can use a BAQ to search for values of a field and populate that field. Today's example is going to be on the part table and part number in particular. To create a BAQ zone, you first need to create your BAQ. Under System Management here in 10, Business Activity Query, BAQ here. We're going to create a new BAQ. We're going to call it Part. And we will create a new one and we'll describe that as Part BAQ for our BAQ zone. We need to be shared and global for the BAQ for it to function properly in a BAQ zone. We're going to save that now. And then we're going to build our query. We go to the query builder here. Our tables available are in the left pane. In the filter box here, we'll just type in part to see all the part tables. And for this particular BAQ, all we're going to need is the part table. We can either double click on it or drag it into the field of uh, on the right. And this is the only field that we need, so there's no linking involved. Next, we want to choose what fields we're going to display on our BAQ. This one's going to be quite simple. We just want to see our part number and our part description. Uh, the next thing is to choose a sort order that our BAQ will display our return data in. We don't have to have a sort order, but it does often make sense. In this particular instance, we're going to sort on part number, so we see them ascending by part number. Notice that the arrow here to the left, A, you can choose ascending, and the arrow points up, or descending. If you double click on it, it switches. But if we want ascending part number, we're going to save that BAQ. And we're going to go over to our Analyze tab. And we're going to see how it runs. First, we will analyze it. Our syntax is OK. We have no problems. Not surprising since it's a single table. And then we'll test it. We see here that we've got all our parts being returned with the part numbers sorted ascending in a description of those parts. There's our BAQ. Now we're going to create the BAQ zone, which is done via the extended properties of the fields. We can get out of the BAQ designer for now. And the extended properties are located within system setup, system maintenance, and then extended properties. You need to choose which table the uh, field that we're going to be running the BAQ zone on. In this case, it's going to be the part table. And once we load that table, we can see all our fields here on the left. And if we choose the field that we want, which is going to be part num, and then we go into the field view here, we need to select two items for the BAQ zone to function properly. One is we need to select our BAQ here from the zone BAQ field, and that's going to be called part. And we notice here that, just to be sure, I had identified it as part BAQ for BAQ zone. Click on that to populate the zone A BAQ field. And then we need to link that column 
to the proper uh, data, which is also going to be part number. We'll scroll down to our part num. Select that. And then we will save. Now we have created our BAQs for the BAQ zone. We have I linked it properly within the extended property and maintenance uh, table. And we can be saved and we'll close out of here. Now for the uh, to be able to see the functional BAQ zone, we're going to need to close the application and reopen it. Which we can do by just logging in again with a change user. Once we are logged back in, we'll go back to our main menu. And where can we find part? We'll go to production management and job management and setup. We have our part I master here, which will have our part field on there. When we open up that particular screen of the application, we're going to now see next to that part field, this little arrow on the right side pointing to the right. And uh, you'll notice that it has the info, the info zone search. You do have to put in an initial value. So if we put in, say, G, and then we click on there, it's going to select all of the parts beginning uh, with part number G in ascending order. We can scroll through all those parts, and we can select one, and then double-click it, and it will populate into the, uh, into the screen. And we can also continue to use that if we... Go back to X or something else. There is two X parts. Select one of those and it populates. Very handy. That is a BAQ zone. We're going to do one more example of the BAQ zone. On this one, we're going to do a, uh, a vendor ID, which can be very handy as well. As before, we need to create a BAQ behind the BAQ zone. Under System Management, BAQs. This BAQ, we're going to call Vendor. And typically with BAQ zones, you're going to find that you're looking at a single table uh, because you're just trying to populate a single field and you're looking at the table that contains that field. This is going to be vendor BAQ for zone. As before, we need to be shared and global. We'll save that. <coughs> BAQ, and then we will build the query. It's going to be on the a vendor table. If we type in VEN there, choose vendor and double click or drag it over. On this one, we're going to display a few more fields. We're going to put our vendor ID because that, in fact, is the column that we're going to search on. We're also going to look at the vendor name so we know what that vendor name is and the city and the state for instance if you had several vendors like a Granger or something like that within the same location but you wanted to make sure you're choosing the correct one we're going to save that and go to our to analyze here we'll check it out our syntax is okay we'll run a test you see now, we didn't put a sort here, so we notice that it is defaulting to the supplier number, which is not one of our fields here. So you can see why it makes sense to put in a sort. And we will go back to our query builder, and we're going to add a sort. That sort will be on 
on the vendor number. And let's display that. Yep, and we can see that our previous sort was on vendor number. It still is somewhat uh, discombobulated viewing what's returned here. So actually, we should be sorting on our vendor ID, which we will now do. If we sort on vendor ID, it's going to make more sense from what we see returned here. We'll clear the grid, and we'll run it again. Now, as you can see, it's ascending on our supplier ID. We will save that. And we're now going to uh, activate the zone through the extended property setup. Again, I'm back to system setup and then system maintenance and our extended properties. We're going to look at the vendor table and we're going to choose our field. Here is the uh, vendor ID. Look at our fields here. Then we need to choose our BAQ zone. If we type in V, we'll find our vendor BAQ here. Select that. And our linked column is going to be the vendor ID. Once we save, our BAQ zone is now active and running, but we do need to log out and log back in for that to take effect. Once we do so, we'll go out to a uh, place where you need to select vendors. How about purchase order entry? Be under material, purchase management, general ops. Go to our PO entry here. And when it brings up the screen, we should see that arrow to the right here on the supplier. Let's create a new PO. And once we do so, and we see that our BAQ zone is active, if we put in say G and then select here, it should populate all of our G suppliers. And you'll notice here that uh, we do have the rest of the information from our VAQ, so we can select the one that's in the appropriate city or state, assuming we have multiple vendors in that city or state. Double click on your selection and it populates. That's the BAQ zone. Very uh, useful and easy to set up tool in Epicor 905, 605, and forward. Thanks much for your time.